Like, you like to be, what's the name of the bank? Nah, I want to calculate because there's another bank also that is on the picture. Yes. So they invested 3 million, right? Yes. They invested 3 million. That means that now it's, it's sitting at what? 6 million, right? Mm. Yes. And your office like is claiming money that is not let me verify. Okay, we so that verify. we can give you props, guys. Where, where no, we can like, verify, guys. Where, where we can where, verify where you guys uh 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 where's due, ne? And on top of that, ne, we also received a number of concessions for honor students. Welcome to Marcel Simon Show. Thank you guys who has been watching our show. Please hit the subscription button, like, comment, and share. Today we have an incredible brain in the house, someone I love. She's our vet president. Um, you know, she has been an EFF member for a very long time. But anyway, let me just give her the liberty to say that. Uh, guys, we are joined by Bukisa Bonisa, 2024-2025 uh, vet president. Yes, I'll see herself. Hello. Hi, it's 2023, 2024. Oh, damn. Yeah, I'm not going to be here next year. Really? Yeah, this is my final year here. Are you going to work? Yeah. I've already got on a job. No. But yeah. I'm going to work. I'm tired of school. Yeah. No. Probably you will open an NGO by the time. Yeah, definitely. Here. I think that's just one thing I want to do before the end of my term. Advise me. How does one become a vice president? Um... Like hours, minutes, seconds, and days of like dedication. Um, you have to. I, I like. I really, for me, like the end goal wasn't to be president, right? That has never been the end goal. But I think just dedicating yourself to like the service of students and stuff like that. So I started when I was in first year. My first year was in twenty nineteen. So you can imagine. <laughs> The time spent um, doing activist work and stuff like that. So I think, yeah, I think what it looks glamorous like now because it's, you know, people think it's done. But like there's a lot of effort that went into it. There's a lot of um, sacrifice that went into it. So that's how one becomes an SRC president. And I think most presidents would probably relate to that as well. Yeah. You don't just wake up one morning and you're like... Ah. Yes, I see presidents. And it's also not that glamorous, actually. Mm. It's not. It's just a lot of hard work. And, yeah. Uh, Wiki, so, like, just before you become an vice president, like, just tell me a bit of how you grew up your childhood. You know? Okay. So, I grew up in Soweto. Um, I grew up with um, my mom, my dad, my two siblings. Um, and like at home, like academic excellence is something that's always encouraged. And also I very, I grew up in a very political home where we like discussed a lot of politics. We engaged about what is happening in the country at that particular time. Mm -hmm. Um, and that also just inspired my love for history. It inspired my love for just people in general and assisting people. So I guess that kind of prepared me for the university space in itself and also built my passion. Um, for just assisting people and also just being a part of the political space. So have you always viewed yourself or believed or been told that you are a leader? <laughs> um, I don't want to sound like pompous and stuff like that, um, but I've always been in like leadership world since like primary like in grade seven, I was a prefect. In high school, I was part of the RCL throughout my high school career. And in matric, I was the secretary of the RCL. So even when I got to it, I took up a lot of leadership positions. In my first year, I was the chain and transformation officer of the EFF. Um, in my second year, I was the chairperson of my school council and also my faculty council. So that, So I've always just... Um, been in some form of leadership position and I think that also kind of prepared me for the SRC and prepared me for the role that I took last year as academic officer and now this year as the president so I, I think I've yeah I think I've been in leadership positions my whole life and I think that has prepared me for this current moment like when you came to varsity first year join EFF yeah like I knew already I was going to join the EFF in high school already why out of all the organizations? Because I felt as if there isn't an organization in South Africa that represents the youth as the EFF does. There isn't an organization in South Africa that's actually passionate 
about changing the economic conditions mm -hmm. of black people. There isn't an organization in South Africa that actually be like does what it preaches. That if, for instance, it's about accountability, they actually hold people accountable. If it's about um, radical economic transformation, they actually have policies that support that. And you can actually see it even in their manifesto in terms of how they explain how they'll get the youth um, to be a part of um, the econo like yes, the economy and stuff like that. So I felt like that was the only organization. And at that point, when I made the conscious decision of the fact that I'm going to join the EFF, in history we were um, looking at the road to democracy and we were looking at black consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I think those um, ideals I learned in history at that particular time just linked to what the EFF stood for. And that's why then I just made that decision that, well, it's really not even up for debate. They're the only political movement in South Africa that's actually doing something right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm coming to EFF, but <laughs> let's let's talk um a bit about her role as the vice president. Mm -hmm. What it like from the first moment that night when you got the results yeah. and you won like as 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 a president, you got the majority vote, right? Yeah. You got the majority vote. How was your state of mind at that time? Um, of course I was happy. Like of course I was like, Yay, we won. Yeah. Um, but I, I understood that it wasn't necessarily done and at that point I wasn't the president. Like it wasn't said that I'd be the president. So more than anything, I was happy that the EFF won. I was ecstatic. But also with that, I just felt as if like, like it's going like, okay, now it's getting real because yeah. it's not even about have we convinced people enough that we are going to do what we say we're going to do. But it was about, do you actually do what you said you were going to do? Like, have, are you going to be able to deliver on the promises you made to the student body? Are you going to be able to actually bring or make sure that, um, the experiences of students at WITS improves. So at that point in time, it was really that. I think that was the one thought that was really consuming me. Like, am I actually... And I guess I, I, like, I go through a lot of imposter syndrome. Um, and you probably think about, okay, but am I actually like capable of doing that and stuff like that? And I think that always keeps me on my feet because it, it doesn't allow me to be complacent because people are watching and people are waiting for you to fail. So you can't afford to be complacent. And yeah, that's what I was thinking at that particular time. So far, it's about, um, let me just say, two months, a whole two months and a few weeks in the office. Yeah. Looking at the promises that you guys made to your students, have you managed to deliver? I think we've tried our best to deliver on them. So, for instance, when you're looking at, so right now, the things that are central, the things that we can speak on in terms of what we have achieved are three um, things. So it's accommodation, it's financial exclusion, and it's academic exclusion. Mm -hmm. So I think with the first one being academic exclusion, this is something you work on in December and January when people are writing the appeals and so forth. And I think Atlehang, who's our academic officer, has done amazing work in that department. And she's ensured that even in the December period, she's always there for students. She's reachable. Um, she has um, even like steps in order of how students should look at academic exclusion and how they should possibly ensure that they come back to the institution. So I think with that, she did an amazing job. Um, even when it came to meetings that she had to represent students, she did an amazing job in those forums as well. And then secondary to that, which is financial exclusion, um, our SRC this year was able to raise about nine point one million. Um, I heard that your office is claiming numbers that are not real. What numbers that are not real? They're saying it's not. It's less than nine million. It's around um, like like two million. Oh, come on! Is that, is that so let real? me break it down for you. Yes. So, um, we had received an initial. Um, so the thing, how it works with the SRC fund is that if you raise money, the VC normally matches that money ran for it, right? Yeah. So initially, we had received $3 million from 
uh, a bank, right? So a bank wanted to invest in our campaign. What so is that's the name of million. the bank? <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. So three million, right? Hmm. I don't know. You like to be, what's the name of the bank? No, I want to calculate because there's another <laughs> bank also that is on the picture. Yes. So they invested 3 million, right? Yes. They invested 3 million. That means that now it's, it's sitting at what? 6 million, right? Mm. Yes. And then you also had, uh, I can't disclose the sponsor because the sponsor said they just don't want to be disclosed. Okay. And that particular sponsor raised about 2, mm. 2 million, right? And now we're sitting at what? So that's six million plus four. Mm. That's what? That's ten. No. Six million plus four is ten. Yes, it's ten, right? Yeah. And then we also got but the money from the undisclosed sponsor didn't mm. go towards um finances. Mm. It went towards accommodation. Okay. And then we also got money from the Motipes. And from the Motipes we got an additional one million, right? Mm. And then one million plus two plus that. It's no, minus the four. Okay. It's it's one million, right? So it's six plus two, which is eight. Yes. Right? And then the PGA, the PGA on its own raised about, I think, one point something million. But that wasn't matched by the VC. Hmm. So when you look at the total, it's actually above nine point um one million. But what I'm speaking about is money that went towards financial inclusion. Is this man like on like on the books, the SRC yeah. records? Yeah, I can even like show you on my phone mm. like the amount of, but I can't show you the student numbers. I can only show you the money at the end. Mm. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, come, let me show you. <laughs> Let's see. Like, I heard that your office like is claiming money that is not. Let me verify. Okay. We so can that verify. we can give you props, guys. Where? where no, we can like, verify, guys. Where? Where? We can where, verify. Where you guys are. Uh, uh, uh. Was due, ne? And on top of that, ne, we also received a number of concessions for honor students. Please don't look at student numbers. Actually, let me hide no. these student numbers. No, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't okay, know. so you see this is like one point. That's the that's batch. I don't know what. 1.9, right? Let me show you another. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of money. Because you think we lie. Why would we lie? Like, why would we lie? Okay, which one did I just open? No, I just want to verify. That's four. <laughs> who's saying we're lying like wow guys who's saying we're lying we, 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 i think i think it's like like, like this it's it's fine because like it clears the air you know yeah it, it's fine it's fine no let me show you some more i'll show you all of them this is 1.6 okay. did you see yes so i'll show you so i saw it so okay. now it's it's 1.9 1. 1. 1. 1. uh-uh 1.9 1. 9. 9, yeah 1.9 1. 9 plus, plus 1.6 it's two Three point five. Okay, yeah. I don't. I'm not good with math, but yeah, I'll let 5. you do that. Um. Yeah, man, I can buy a house. Just to let them know. So you could know. And this is. I don't want to show you yeah. student numbers. The and this is two point five. Okay. And how much is that when you add it? Yeah, uh, I was at. 3.5 it's 4.6 it's 6 now the couple okay tens of thousands okay okay wait let me show you some more <laughs> ah, people that say we lie kill me because why would I lie this thing is politics why politicians do lie you guys are activists but on the other hand you guys are politicians but you know me like if i fail at something i'll tell you like i really think i didn't do well in that particular thing i'll tell you like even now do i think this is enough i don't think it's enough i, I you know that i it's, don't it's think a it's big, enough it's a big statement you know me it's a big statement oh you don't i not in a sense where you can be able to decipher if someone is, is lying or not. Or not. Yeah. Okay, no, Cause someone that. can lie genuinely. No, I hear that. I hear that. No, I hear that for real. And this is like 2.8. Okay. Never about the SRC. Okay. Money, eh? <laughs> no, but like it's important. And I like what you're saying. Mm. It's very important to like clear the air on yeah. things. So you know if people are actually telling the truth. Mm. Right. Because... As much as, like, I might present as if, like, no, I'm doing my work. You don't know if I'm doing my work unless I show you proof that I am doing my work. Mm. And I think that's proof. Yeah. So if 
No, you, you if guys. If you think I'm not doing enough, you, you, I don't think I'm doing like a hundred percent. Yes, yes. There's always room for improvement, mm. but I think with the resources and everything I've tried to do with my team so far, I really think we're doing our best, mm. and I think we've tried our best to ensure that students are registered, students aren't academically excluded, and students have accommodation. So, are all students registered? I don't think so. Yeah. And that's me being honest. Yeah. But do I think the majority of students are registered, or an overwhelming majority of students are registered? Definitely. About how many percent who are not registered out of? I can show you the stats of last year compared to this year, mm. in terms of how many students are registered. <laughs> but from, 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 because like, me, I, I love gathering information, mm -hmm. you know. I like that too. I like that. From what I heard, yeah. I don't know how true it is. Yeah. It's it's less than a hundred. That are not registered. Yes. I don't know. It's how it's many somewhere that. around that. It's somewhere around that number. But I'm trying to um bring up stats from last year of how many students excuse me, at this point were registered last year compared to this year. And I'm not I'm not blowing my own horn, but at this point we've registered more students than students that were registered last year. Mm. I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to be you I'm know not spicy. campaigning for EFF with those words. I'm not campaigning. It's just like if our work is campaigning for us, then no problem. But like it's not like I'm campaigning about lies. Yes. Like this is the work we have put in. Yeah, yeah but right. if the EFF's work just campa campaigns for itself, then that's fine, you know? And I don't think we should we should be scared of that also. Like, we've just been working hard. And I think if you are working hard, you deserve the props. Like, outside all of the naysayers and all of that, like, if you are actually doing your work, like, people should say you are doing your work. Yes. And I don't, I don't think it's, it's 100%. I don't think anything that anyone ever does will ever be 100%. But if people have made like honorable and very like big strides in trying to do something, that should count for something. What? Do you, do you think like Sasko is, I don't know, man, I, I don't want to, but let me just say, yeah. do you think Sasko, uh, this niggas may catch feelings, but do you think Sasko is, kind of projecting a picture that is not there about the current SRC? I think that's their job. Yes. Like, it's like something that Ari says. He's like, um, a hater's job is to get someone they can hate on. Like, that's your job. Like, your job is to hate. Mm. Right? And Are they hating or opposing? They're hating. I mm. feel like, because when you're opposing, when you're opposing, you're supposed to provide counters. Mm. Right? And if you're not providing a counter, if you're not saying, okay, fine, the SRC is not doing this. This is what we'll do. Mm -hmm. That's opposition. If you just say, oh, no, the SRC is not doing this, not doing that, that's not opposing anything. Mm -hmm. You're just making a remark. Like, you're not providing any counter arguments. You're not providing any counter actions. So that can't count as opposition. And that's what I think the EFF got right when we were in opposition. When the EFF was in opposition, we'd say, the SRC is not doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and as the EFF will do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, for instance, if you remember the protest in 2021, that protest was started by the EFF, and that protest actually had momentum. That protest lasted, it was probably the longest lasting protest after fees must fall. Because, yes, as you might think, like maybe you think two weeks is a very short time for a protest, but in actual fact, having to engage in protest action for more than a week is crazy, right? And I think that's what the EFF got right. The EFF didn't just say, you're not doing enough, and then we fold our hands and be like, well, they're just not doing enough, and I'm complaining. You're not doing enough, and so forth, and therefore I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. Mm. You get me? So that's how it works. That's how it works. So if you're just going to be running your mouth, and they're allowed to do that. They're definitely allowed to do that. But you're supposed to provide an alternative. Mm. But if you do not provide an alternative, you're simply a hater and you're not opposition. Because that's what haters do. They just run their mouth and they don't do anything. 
But if you want to be opposition, okay, sharp. Tell us where we're not doing whatever we're supposed to be doing. Then do something else. Like show us what we're supposed to be doing. And they fail to do that. They haven't done that not once. I Like as a student at the end of the day, we are here to start. But like when you guys are together, besides SRC staff, there is that sisterhood and brotherhood. With thing. what? Sasko? With, yes. Me? Yes. Enough. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It makes sense. But, okay. We are all fighting for a common thing here. Just to want students. You students know, have, yeah, students have the to best. Live a yeah. better life, have accommodation, you know, have best time here at the university, you know, less challenging and everything. So we are not parliamentarians, you know, we are not those guys up there. So I think at the end of the day, we should like, like when we're working for a common purpose and come together, you know. Sure, yeah. I, 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 I agree with that now. However, I also have reservations with that because I think my experience in student activism and, um, yeah, my experience informs my particular opinion on that particular issue. Definitely, I think when it comes to issues that are affecting students, people definitely should come together, not only just like from political lines and stuff like that. Everyone, like the whole of its um, populace, should come together and fight for those particular things. However, I think it's also important to understand people's intentions mm -hmm. and to understand people's positionality in whatever we're fighting. Because if we're being honest and we're honest about the crisis that the funding crisis the accommodation crisis the food security crisis we have in higher education i don't think and i'm not convinced that um people that form or are under um anc substructures are being honest because if you are being honest you'd recognize that the reason why we in this mess we in is because of the sitting government and if people aren't, aren't willing to denounce the sitting government that's problematic because then you're saying okay sharp Let's protest, let's do all of these things, let's march, let's write memorandums of demands, let's do all of these things. However, at the end of the day, you go back and you vote for the people that put us in this very same position. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's being genuine. You're not being genuine at all. Because if your government is failing to do something and you fail to hold them accountable, and then the next time you come back and you say students must then put themselves in compromising positions, must be then arrested by your government, and then at the end of that, you just still want to vote for the ANC. I think that's being so in, in like disingenuous because you're not actually acknowledging what the real problem is. And therefore, you're not going to want a real solution. And that's what you see on a yearly basis at VIT. When then we speak about, okay, fine, let's have an honest conversation. If the EFF was in government or if the EFF was sitting on any steering committee in parliament and higher education, right? let's hold those people accountable. Let's hold the ANC accountable. The ANC has been saying we must be, we'll get free education since when? Since 1994. Come on, guys. 30 years after, still nothing. In 2018, Jacob Zuma announced that we'd have free education through NASFAS. You look at NASFAS right now, it has an accommodation cap. It's going to have a academic requirement next year of that you need to be, or you need to have an average of 60% for you to be eligible to get NASFAS. Is that free education? Like, that's, that's not even close to free education. And then you have people that, in these general elections, on campus, that are still going to vote for the ANC. When you see these problems that we're having, I don't think that's being genuine. That's not being genuine at all. Do you know who's the owner of that can? Um, DJ Swoo. Nah. <laughs> like, specifically this flavor. You told me off camera. <laughs> I don't like lying. <laughs> who's the owner? Like the name? You said it's Miss South Africa. Yeah. 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 You know why I bought you this one specifically? No, I don't. Cause like um, <sighs> last time we had DJ Spoo here, he shared so many things like why they decided to partner with Miss SA, you know. Miss mm. SA having to empower young girl in townships and you look at Miss SA trying to help also not just empower and talk and talk, they also provide sanitary towels 
and everything they're equipping a lot of that's young, proper yeah like young, young girl so seeing the leadership in 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 the miss essay program i decided to 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 give you this and to acknowledge Aww. say somehow i i think you hold the same attributes you know that's so sweet thank yeah. you that's um, so adorable yeah so whenever you 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 go around and and I must drink, buy this one. Drink more fire. Not necessarily buy a drink. <laughs> buy this one if you want to. But but think of what the, what the it change represents. Yeah, yeah. It, it represents in yeah. the society. You know. Um right now you 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 guys have you you said you guys have managed to lower the number of students who are excluded, managed to raise the number of students who uh, the AODs who were approved, they got registered. And that's the students that had historical debt as a result of the accommodation cap last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hardship students that received the fund, but um, they still had a shortfall. People that received the fund and still had the shortfall, and they had still to pay extra. We got a, a thing, a concession for those students. We got like a whole lot of concessions, and I think people should. I think possibly the SRC should do more in communicating these bins. Mm-hmm. And having like probably a post of everything we've done so far, so people are aware of the things that the SRC has been doing. Because I don't think we've been sleeping. I think the whole SRC has been working so hard over the January, over the December period, even now during the registration period. We've literally, and I'm not complaining. This is what we're supposed to be doing. We've overextended ourselves, and that's just because we want to see students have a better experience at this. We want to see students leave this institution with degrees. We want to see students' lives just generally um, be better, right? And that's what we want. So I'll remember that. <laughs> Before the year ends, yeah. if nothing changes, I'll have the VC here. Like I, That's I, good. I, I, I wish like he can confirm everything. That I've said. Yes, and also, <laughs> and also, like, I want to hear also his perspective, because like every year we have been protesting yeah. for 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 I don't know how many years every year we protested, but this year somehow we didn't protest, and when Mister Jerome September was here, I I told him I was like that's my wish that's my prayer that next year we don't protest. Really? When Apio was here, yeah. also I told him the same thing. Can mm. check the interview with Apio. I can just try to find that part, but I hate watching myself. Same. No. So, <laughs> so, so that's same. that's the challenge. I told them that I I wish next year we might f- try to find a way to solve so is, our, yeah. our our challenges without having to protest and, and everything. Because I've been tracking the consequences of protest every year. Yeah. And the university have brutally yeah. made the example of activists who are involved in the protest. You look the likes of mm-hmm. Zabot Lamin, I mean, yeah. Zabot Lamin. You look the likes of the, just the recent one last year yeah. where they open cases against you. They make sure they they assassinate your career you can look at the end of the day we are here fighting for a genuine cause but guys look at how this thing is affecting us you spend your four years and then you don't work don't get anything it's, it's not it. it's not it's not worth it yeah the, the, the cause is worth it but yeah. at the end of the day you must go home and sit and do nothing and that's just something i've always also said like if we are going to nah, like if it's up to me and if we are going to actually like protest right i think it's very important that when we do it like we make sure like if that's the one point we like okay yeah zin fuck 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 it like it's going down let that (laughs) (laughs) no man let that be the reason that we're going to get free education they like calling it a suicide mission Mm. like to ensure that after that like no one else is going to have to fight for that but I think it's 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 I don't I don't I don't agree with doing it every year and you get no returns because mm. the stakes are high. Like it's too like it. I don't think it's fair for anyone's child to go back home without a degree because 
you were fighting for people to have um, education and access to education. And in the next year, it's still the same story. So, like, if we were going to fight, like, we must make sure that that's the last time we fight it. Mm-hmm. And that's that. Like, I'm not against protest at all. In fact, I think they have a significance or role to play, right? But I think people need to also think about, they need to weigh the risks and also weigh the returns. Like, if I'm going to risk this, what is my return? What's my expected return? And if your expected return is not more than your risk, then it's not worth it. It's really not worth it. But if you're going to go into a protest, then I'll probably be there, even if I'm not in university at that particular time. And if the youth is able to mobilize themselves, if the ANC is still in government, God forbid. But I think if the EFF takes governance this year, I don't think students or the youth would have to do that. But let's say the ANC still has power, of which I doubt. And the youth decides to mobilize themselves towards the core of free decolonizing quality education. I'll also be on the streets with them. But that would have to be the very last time that we do that. How does the future of higher education look like whenever you imagine it? Um, the future of the of of the sector, when I look at it, mm-hmm. um, to me looks more inclusive. Um, it looks um more innovative. It looks um more diverse. Um it also I think the the manner in which we value knowledge and the manner in which we transfer knowledge is also very different. And um, it also looks accessible to all. Um, and it also just looks, you know, red because of the EFF. Because I think those are the only people that Not because actually... of the blood? No, man. Those are the only people. Those are the only people that could actually ensure that the future of education looks like everything I've described. So, yeah, that's how I look at it. Because the not reason why I, m- I mentioned blood, I feel like uh, I don't know, but I feel like let me just say not just say, say it. I'm not just say it for, for my own sake, but like. The current government mm. has reversed all the FISMAS fall Gains. achievement. Yeah, that's true. Have have reversed everything, everything. Yeah. Like we are, if it's even worse than the time of FISMAS fall yeah. right now. So, uh, uh, what do you wish to see the current government maybe? Okay, let's say they win for argument's sake. They yeah. win next year. They're back again in power, same ANC government. What do you think they can be doing better and more to higher institution? I really don't have any confidence in the sitting government. I have none. I really don't think... There's always the room for redemption. I get that, but like room for the redemption after 30 years. I Remorse. think that's enough room to redeem yourself. Imagine what you could... You're not even 30. I'm not even 30. And, like, at 30, I think I would have understood, like, life. I think at that point, I would I would have made all of my mistakes and I would have actually been stable mm-hmm. at 30 years. I really don't think there is any way that the ANC government is able to redeem itself. I'm not confident. Like, 30 years is a very long time to not be able to redeem yourself. I think we've given the ANC government a lot of time. Like, I think we've a 30-year-old person is a very old person. Like, that person should know life. And I think we've, we've really over-exhausted ourselves as South Africans. And I have no confidence, none whatsoever, in the ANC government and its capability to deliver free education, to deliver quality health care, to deliver housing, basic housing. I have no confidence at all. So I really don't think, and I hope whoever's watching this, right, I'm not saying whatever, but I think please make an informed decision when voting on the 29th of May. If it's up to me, I'd say vote for the EFF because I genuinely think 
that that is the only political party in South Africa that will do anything, really. But I'd, I'd suggest that people read on the manifestos of the different political parties. I've read the ANC's manifesto. You know... Uh, I've read the DA's manifesto. I've read the EFF's manifesto. Um, I think those are the three major parties that have released manifestos. And then Action SA just released one page. Like, also, the effort that goes into writing these manifestos and how seriously these people take you. Guys... They're not into talking. They're, in, they're into action, as you can hear their who? name. Action SA can hear their name. Action what? What are you actioning? They're actioning making, what? Making difference. How? Policing. What difference are they making? You will see. Just vote them. No. Say. No, it doesn't work like that. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> the, 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 the hypocrisy of political parties okay, yes. are just like religious, religious movement or religious organization. They believe we are the only ones. Religious organization, they say we are the right religion. Mm. We are worshipping the right God, the right way. Mm. You know, the norms, the tradition are the more acceptable ones. Mm. When you come to political parties, the same thing. Mm. We have the right manifesto. We have the right Bible. Sure. You see, we're worshipping the right God as we have the right, we're fighting for a right cause. Mm. You see. So, um, I think it, it, it takes more than just what you are telling us, what you're selling us, just takes more than that. Mm. What are you giving us? Give give us something. I think, you know, I really think the beauty of democracy is that if you aren't satisfied with whatever lies people told you, if you think people lied to you, you can simply the, vote them out. The, 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 the SRC in all the high institution of learning, of learning mm. they have... Or maybe they have the power to be able to steal the hearts of young people to mm. vote for a for EFF, if as you are saying, mm. if if it's it's going to be that case. Why? Because they can work hard to say, this is what the EFF is capable of. Look at what we have done. You see. So you guys, as the EFF, I have seen like last year, so many institutions like the biggest institution in the country are governed by EFF SRC. So you guys have a big responsibility to yeah. win the hearts of these young people That's to make true. change and, and let them trust you guys. But I think that in itself already signifies that the youth is thinking in a certain direction and the youth has confidence in a certain political party. Because if you have majority, if not all institutions, right, that are governed by the EFF, that's already the youth saying mm. that we want a government of the EFF. I think that in itself is very clear. But I definitely agree with you that the SRCs that are currently in power have so much responsibility to ensure that we get students registers, we get students accommodation, we try to solve it, food insecurity on our campuses, we ensure that we improve the experiences of students on our campuses, definitely, that's definitely correct. But I think that already has shown some form of confidence in the EFF from the youth, in the fact that so many institutions are now governed by the EFF. And when you look at certain institutions, and this is an exception, you've heard that the EFF comes into power and it retains power. And that means that generally the youth has confidence in an EFF government. And I hope that is also true for the Vits um, community and the Vits populace, because I think with how we've run registration this year, how we've um, dealt with academic exclusions and so forth this year as well, hopefully the student populace feels as if that is enough and therefore they'll re-elect us next year. I mean, at the end of this year in September. Mm. Yeah. We shall see. We shall see. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> I'll be waiting. That really makes me nervous. I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah. I think that also helps me not to be complacent. Because I think, like, if you don't do your job, people won't be satisfied and therefore you won't retain power. Mm. And I think that's just always the driving cause and the driving motive. That you need to do your job so people keep you in power. And that's how I think democracy works. If you don't do your job, People don't have confidence in There's so many people who don't do their job, but they're in power.
but that's that, but I think that's because of voter apathy. Like people feel as if like the democracy, like how democracy is, it doesn't work. But I think people should recognize their power and recognize that they have the right to choose who governs them. And it's th- totally up to them. Do you think the old people, when I say the old people, I'm referring to our uncles, our fathers and sisters, mm. grandmoms, do you think when they're sitting at home, they feel like they owe the ANC their vote? And also, do you think like the young people who are getting these different social grants mm. from ANC, from the government, mm. to say, like, they're getting the, this social grant from the government. Yeah. They're getting whatever benefits from the government. Whenever they're sitting, they feel like they owe. Listen to what I'm saying. They're getting social grants, whatever, different yeah. social, from the government. But when they're sitting at home, they feel like they owe their vote to the ANC government. Possibly. I mean, possibly. And I think that's what the ANC currently is um, running with in terms of their election strategy and stuff like that. That's their propaganda machine that the ANC gave you. The social grounds of 350, which is just crazy because who survives of 350 in 2024 in South Africa? Number one, um, they claim that they also give NASFIS and that NASFIS has helped so many. Of course it has. It has helped so many students whatever, whatever, they claim that um, the reason why we have democracy is because of the ANC, which is a lie, a blatant lie, because the ANC wasn't the only political movement that was involved in the liberation struggle. And I'd put it to you that the PAC was a more involved political movement and didn't sell out its people during the liberation struggle. So what the ANC premises its election strategy on is fear. It's saying to these people, you won't get your grant anymore if you don't go for the ANC. And and that in itself is so, like, that's an insult. It's really an insult. Because you're telling people that, oh, yeah, if you don't vote for us, you're not going to get those things. And that's hella manipulative, too. Because when you look at the social grants, when you look at NASFAS, that's taxpayers' money. It's not money that the ANC has or money that the ANC coughs up. If no, it's from the organization it's, as an ANC. Exactly, it's not from the organization. It's from people that work in this country and pay taxes. So it's a not even them saying, okay, yeah, this is our money, this is our money that we're giving you. No. In fact, what the EFF is proposing is way more than that. And I think it's something that we could be doing more. 350 a month doesn't buy you groceries. Like, that doesn't buy you groceries. You can't survive off of 350 a month. It's it's diabolical. I eat right? more than three fifty a week. Exactly. Like three fifty at university is probably your allowance for two days. Mm-hmm. Two to three days. So it doesn't make sense that that in itself is also an insult. That you're just giving people three hundred and fifty. I don't think Soto Ramaphosa survives off of three fifty a month. Like would he be able to survive off of that a month? No. So I think South Africans need to realize that taxpayers are pay a lot of money to the government for people to only get those services for us to not have quality health care for people to not have social housing for us to not have free education so much money comes from taxpayers and the ANC government all it does is to pocket most of that money and it gives you the scraps so i think you shouldn't none of none of the people in south africa should be settling for scraps at any point because it's really an insult to even tell people that we give you nurses, we give you 350 per month, so you must vote for us. That's an insult. Now, there's talking about poor health care. Mkwebo uh, Lamin always mentioned the story of his mother. Mm. She struggled with the poor health care at Barakonas. There's a, there's a lady I know. She, she used to love me. She used to love me so much. So much, that lady. Find her on Friday mornings when I was in high school. She'll send me texts, you know. But she was she was sick, you know, and she had it. She was sick. I won't mention the sickness in, in, just for the family. But um, she was waiting for chemo and uh, waiting for to go to a machine to be scanned and yeah. bend the, the illness that she had. She waited for over 12 months on the mm. queue. They were saying they only have one machine mm. for her to go there. She, she died before she went into the machine. Damn. And uh, like just me thinking if maybe there were 
enough machine, the queue wasn't that long, maybe she would be alive. Yep. And there's so many black Africans who are, we have some similar stories, yeah. the parents, uncles who are dying because of, and uh, this 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 thing, we don't talk about it so much, the poor healthcare thing, always whenever we're talking, we're talking about education, free education, yeah. and, uh, but th- this, there's so much happening around us. But at times we, we get to accept it's normal. It's normal you go and at the, the hospital you, you are sick, you are bleeding, you, yeah. s- you stay there for hours and hours. I think healthcare also is not even also divorced from what students on campus go through, right? Mm-hmm. At WITS, we're fortunate enough, yes, to have campus health and campus health can um, readily deal with like issues that you f- like affect you now and then, right? But even when you're looking at like access to healthcare um, or sexual reproductive healthcare for men and women on campus, it's very limited, right? So even when you're looking at things like access to, um, yeah, so let's say abortion, for instance, you don't have students that have those services readily available to them. And I'd argue that that's just a basic, that's basic healthcare because you don't know how it arrives to that and the reasons for people needing that particular service. But those things need to be readily available to students. So even when you have issues like, let's say, this is something that happens to VITS, I mean, at VITS a lot, um, students that are in distress and students that are affected by anxiety and depression, right? Mm -hmm. As much as we do at VITS have those facilities and we have services like that, not all institutions in the country have that. Even to go above that, when you have issues with just your health and you can't afford to go to a med care, you get recommended to either go to Charlotte or go to um, Helen Joseph, right? And the state in those facilities, as much as, yes, they are able to assist students, they are very limited. And students also have to go through that. So it's not something that's divorced to what students have to go through. But it's also a thing of you have that affecting VIT university students as well. So the issue of proper healthcare in South Africa is not only for communities out in Soweto or people that are in Kailicha, but it also affects VIT students that go to this institution. Because yes, as, mu- as much as we have psychosocial assistance and we have healthcare assistance, that in itself is very limited. And we can't have issues that are addressed on a larger scale because of our failing healthcare system. You have a lot of students that are affected by, um, let's say, um, endometriosis, right? And those students can't get assistance from campus health. They can't get that assistance from CCDU. They would need to get that assistance from a, a, a hospital. But if you then go to Charlotte and Helen Joseph, those services are limited. And you have those things that impact the quality of the student life at VIT and the quality of a student life just generally across campuses in the country. So students shouldn't necessarily divorce themselves from those experiences because they're at VIT, because they're at UJ, because they're at UWC or UCT. But those issues are issues that affect students on campus as well. Yeah, it's stupid. Yeah, over it. Um, what is your plan, guys, on on the drive? Drive, you call it drive what? The pad drive. Yes. Okay, so you know the one thing that I like doing um, is always giving props to people that um, had good ideas and implemented them well. Mm. So, for instance, when you look at um, last year, I think um, the one thing maybe the only thing that the SRC of last year got right was um, the pad drive and what they started doing. So they had... WCCO? Yes. They had that with WCCO, the partnership with WCCO. They also had, um, whatchamacallit, these um, dispensaries at different toilets and stuff like that. So we would want to intensify on that. So ensuring that each and every building adverts has those dispensaries. 
It has um, pad dispensaries and we're working also with school councils to ensure that the SRC isn't the only one that's actually filling up those dispensaries, but you have school councils that are involved in that conversation. And therefore you have a lot of people that are working towards ensuring that people have access um, to pads and sanitary um, sanitary uh, products. So that's just something we'll be intensifying on. And I think um, the other thing that um, we'd also be intensifying on is the reach of the CLICS um, partnership with ESRC of that there's an app where you can log where you need the pads and stuff like that. And normally how it was done last year is that you only got pads if you were in Johannesburg. But what we found is that in December, June, March, when we have our breaks and when we have... Um, what you might call people going home for holiday and stuff like that. Students don't have access to those pads and stuff like that. So we'll be rolling out that program even during December holidays, June holidays, March holidays and stuff like that. So we ensure that students have um, access to um, sanitary um, products throughout the year and not necessarily when they're at fits. Mm. Yeah. Onyo go be at the site. No, you're right. That's 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 great. So like with with the partnership with Clicks, do you only like pay a full amount or you get a certain discount um, as a student? You can you can go into Clicks and get pads. That's the thing. You don't you don't pay. You don't pay. It's, mm. it's for free. So what are the requirements? So last year it was if you are a NASFA student, they sent out a survey. If you need um, those pads, and if you um, from if you get food from WCCO, so it was for WCCO students and NASA students. That's that's dope. Do yeah. the students know about this? Um, I think yeah. So what the WCCO is like is always informing students of this particular form and portal. So if students need the extra assistance and stuff like that, they can go to Karuna WCCO. They can fill out the form. And they can um, get those products. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah. Like I said earlier on, I just it wasn't an easy one, but I think some of us we, we when we got to high school, we got to introduced to Martin Luther King, you know, and uh, we, we we fell in love with how he conducted his organization, you know, the civil rights movement. Yeah the peaceful way of fighting injustice and uh, i just i just want to thank you guys that there was a, no violent protest this year what we saw last year was very disturbing like security having to stone students students having to stone those people are our brothers our parents mm. and like when we have conflict with the institution and now we, we turning into hurting each other it's not it's not a very bad way so and that guy's big big ups already although it upset so many people so many people wanted to protest so badly uh yeah i think also um i have i have two takes on that the first one is actually quite funny because in high school i wasn't i wasn't a big fan of what to the king i was rather a big fan of malcolm x yeah. and direct um confrontation because you know i think at certain points in um, any type of liberation struggle, any type of struggle, rather, um, direct confrontation is very important. And I'm a very confrontational person as well. But as I've said, you need to weigh your risks, right? You need to, like, and that's why why I said that if it needs to get violent, right, you need to weigh your risks and you need to weigh your returns. You can't just get violent for everything and anything, right? So... Um, I think that's quite interesting because I was just thinking right now that like I really wasn't a fan of him in high school. Yeah. Like I was just like, ah, oh, bro, okay, boring, you peaceful, and then what? But I was I was really a huge fan of Malcolm X. But I think also with age, you get to appreciate um time, right? You get mm-hmm. to appreciate um process and not necessarily always jump to being confrontational, and also just. Because you understand the risk. I think at that age, I probably didn't really internalize the risk of actual direct confrontation with anything. Mm. And with age, you, you get to appreciate that, that you need to follow certain um, 
processes before you get to diary confrontation. Um, but that's one thing. And the other thing of people pushing for a protest, again, you need to always be aware of people's intentions. What is your intention? What are you trying to achieve? Do I align to, with what are you trying to achieve? Do I align with your intentions? And I think on a yearly basis, what the PYA has gotten right at this is just to direct or, yes, direct the focus from um, the the from the government and also the departments of higher education and make it seem as if our biggest enemy are our institutions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do our institutions have a role to play in financial exclusion? Definitely, yes, they do. But does the departments of higher education and training have a bigger role to play in terms of um, um, financial exclusion? I think they're the biggest enemies. But what the PA, PYA has done successfully is to ensure that they defocus that and they say no. The problems are, are with our institutions and they don't want to be honest with the fact that our biggest enemy is Bladen Simande. Our biggest enemy is the CEO, CEO of NASFIS. Our biggest enemy is the ANC government. And that's just something they've done successfully. But I just couldn't help doing that on my watch when I understand who the actual enemy is. And the enemy is our departments of higher education and training led by Bladen Simande. That's who we should be fighting. That leads to my next question. Do you think there will be a point to where students... Uh, every year, actually, it starts peacefully, you know, but somehow the tension intensifies yeah. and uh, it leads to violence. But do you think there will be a point even when the violence arises from the law enforcement where students will be just sitting there on the ground and, and not retaliating in in violent form and also what is the better way as student activists we can try to engage with the institution and also with the government towards free education and um, combating exclusions i think it has definitely gotten to a very violent um condition or violent situation with law enforcement and one example of that is um so today's the eighth yes um two days from today about three years ago in 2021 um so in dumba was shut down in brown fancy right and unfortunately he was he was he was just a normal civilian that wasn't a part of the protest at that point. I was going about um, his day. Going about his day, he got shot by the police because the police were shooting at students, mm-hmm. right? And at that point, there wasn't any direct confrontation with the police. And I was on the ground on that day. Um, and you even had, um, like, hours after that at on Empire Road, where we were just, like, we were just sitting peacefully. We went during stones, nothing was burning. Um, and we had thought that it probably would have discouraged the law, law enforcement from shooting at students. So we were just peacefully sitting on the ground. Next thing you know, there's um, tear gas and all of a sudden fire opens and people are just shooting at us. We're just sitting down. So I think for me, that's always just the images that always play in my head when one considers to take up protest action, right? Mm. And do I think it's fair to put students in that position before trying out all, like, civil and diplomatic measures? Um, and, and all of the time, I come to the conclusion that it's possibly not fair mm. because anyone could have died in that, um, in that confrontation. That bullet, you know? Was meant for a student. That bullet was meant for a student, um, so it's, it's those considerations that one has to take. And there has been confrontation like that in the past with law enforcement and students, even during Christmas fall. So many people were shot during Christmas fall and all of that. Um, so I think that's just a consideration that you have to take. Um, and then with regards to what do we, how do we engage the institution and how do we engage the departments. I think the first and immediate thing we can do right now as the youth, as students at Wits University, at students and other institutions, is to be very direct in terms of um, who we vote for, 
right? Because I think, as I've said, and I'm, I'm, I'm like making a point of this because I think that's where the real power lies um, in terms of policy making, in terms of actually implementing policy. It only lies with whoever's governing us at that particular time. So I think the youth should read up on people's manifestos. The youth should actively engage and look at how different political parties have been governing in different um, levels of government. So local government, provincial government, national government. They should look at that and look at who actually has been actually delivering on what they've been saying, right? And I think that's that's a responsibility of any responsible citizen in South Africa. Do your homework, read, do your research, make an informed decision when voting, right? Because I think that's where our problems are and that's where our solutions lie as well. So that would be my advice. And then on an institutional level, I think we should also, I love Vitis because Vitis are very innovative thinkers and they're very smart people. So I think possibly we should also think about a sustainable funding framework, even at Vitis University. Think about something that the SRC wants to do this year is to establish a um, endowment fund for financial exclusion, right? So you have an investment because what you have of it on a yearly basis is that we try to raise funds, we try to raise funds, and it's always like like we we don't know, but we're going to have to raise funds, and we don't know that students are not going to be able to register because they just don't have the funds. And you find in January and December now haphazardly we're running around and we're trying to find funds, whatever. That's not sustainable. What is sustainable, though, is to get money into an investment annuity fund, right, or an endowment fund that will accrue in interest on a yearly basis. And then you assist students with that interest. So you have money in that fund, and that fund on a yearly basis gets interest, and it gets interest, and it gets interest. And that's what you use to bail out, of, bail out students from the historical debts and them not being able to register. That's a more sustainable solution than, I think, protest on a yearly basis, than trying to just haphazardly try to raise funds at the beginning of the year because not everyone gets assisted when you do it like that. But if you, you have... want to raise 12 million in two weeks or in a week. I want to raise 12 million. I mean, like, during protest, we want to raise 12 million in a week. Exactly. And that just, like, it, it just shows that, I don't know, we're just not committed in terms of what we actually want to do. Because so many SRCs have been trying to raise funds and we never really think about a more sustainable framework, a more sustainable way of actually um, fighting historical debts and ensuring that students register on a yearly basis. So I think that's just something we need to entertain on a campus level. And I think this is something that our SRC is working towards. Um, I will share the details of when the launch is going to be for this particular thing. But we are actively working on it. And I really hope before the end of June already, it would have been set up. We would have gotten donors into that particular endowment fund and it starts generating that interest. So next year, we don't find ourselves in a fix where we just like, we need to raise money. What is it like? I don't want Mr. Jerome to hate me, but what? let's be. But um, what is it that this university is not doing right? What is it that this university is not doing right? Um, even is, is stopping even donors who have been donating donating for a very long time now they are not longer donating money. Um, I think right. Um, what the university is not doing right is. Um, not doing more, you know, I think more could be done to ensure that the SRC is capacitated enough to ensure that we're able to register all students on a yearly basis. I don't think it's doing enough in terms of ensuring that students have accommodation because I don't think that the university is unaware of the accommodation crisis. I think that would just be like a lie. Um, I think they could be doing more to ensure that we have affordable accommodation, right? That, for instance, when you're looking at even Bronfantine accommodation, everyone is trying to just make it um, just by the NASFIS, um, what NASFIS is paying. So NASFIS mm -hmm. this year is paying 50000 So all accommodation is just trying to ensure that 
they milk this and it's five exactly right, right. and you have students that aren't a nurses and students that can't afford mm. you have students that can't afford to pay five thousand a month for rent and even when you look at the when you look at how much an apartment is in Brahman scene five thousand is a an apartment a two room apartment mm. that doesn't make sense so the university could be doing could be doing more to ensure that whatever services and accommodation says is providing is in line with the property market. And when you look at these accommodations, trust me, come on, like none of them are giving you a room with 5,000 a month that you get a two room apartment. Like it's, it's not aligning. The university could be doing more to ensure that uni- university students have access to proper accommodation that is affordable. And that's not the case. They could be doing more in terms of um, food security. So when you look at the WCCO, the WCCO, as much as it does a lot of work to ensure that students get food on a daily basis and stuff like that, you have weekends where they don't get food. Mm -hmm. And even during the week, not all students get food from the WCCO. There is so much more that the institution can be doing, and it's not. With the issue of the accommodation, it's so crazy, man. This is one of the most great things that these business people, greedy business people are doing. You know, what is your take on, on this one? And as far as they're saying that we, 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 we can't pay more than this amount because there's someone who's working, who's staying in Newtown, mm. in Marshalltown, in Mawuning, who's paying 3600 a month for mm. rent, a proper apartment. Yeah. He's paying 4000 and then this accommodation, they will tell you they want six, six thousand. They want five point six. They want eight thousand. Ten thousand even. Ten thousand. You see. And as far as we say, okay, we kept at fifty thousand. Then you come to this vet accommodation. Uh, 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 Nozwar will be like minimum is seventy. Yeah. Seventy six or something like eighty. Uh, no, like it's. It's eighty. Something. It's eighty something. It's eighty seven minimum. That's like eight thousand a month. Yes. So you you come to these people. You have to top up like thirty thousand, thirty seven thousand. Yeah. Per annum to someone who's from a very poor background. Yeah. Someone who's starting to use a shower the first time here in Jobe. Because mm. starting to use showers here in Jobe, I starting like to 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 see like five thousand. From the first time from that 5,000 from NSFAS, and you want me to top up 37,000. What is your take on that? It's crazy. Like, it's really crazy. And even last year in our FINCO meeting where they adopted the budget, I sit with Milani in that that, um, um, committee, and I'm only an observer, of course, because Milani is the treasurer, so he's the actual full member. And we didn't didn't agree with that, and there was a long argument in terms of where is our money actually going? Like I do, I don't I don't see where it's going. I don't I don't understand why at our house where junction you need to be paying like a hundred k a year. That's like ten k a month. A month. Mm. Like that doesn't make sense. Like where is my money going? Ten k I get an apartment in Sanson, a nice apartment in Sanson for ten k. I I got I got an apartment also in Sanson. Like was a very nice one. Was three point. 3.6. Exactly. But the distance of traveling was like, it's it's too far. Traveling. But you can get a, mm. you can use a how train. That's it. So. That even doesn't amount to 10K when you use a mm. how train. In that 10K, you can include groceries. Then you and Brahm, you have a student accommodation, 10,000. Imagine that. Like that is, that is just crazy. And the university is not doing anything. Like they're not doing anything. I don't understand what are you paying for? You might say, yes, it's the electricity, it's the it's the generators, it's the Wi-Fi, it's all of that. But come on, guys. It cannot. It cannot amount to 10,000. Unlimited Wi-Fi is around 500 per, uh, per month. 500. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Limited Wi-Fi. That's what I'm... Like, you can get all of these services, including groceries, including your traveling in an apartment in Santa. Mm. That's how crazy it is. Like it's actually crazy, and the university is just not doing enough. Because of time, um, we would be voting soon in two months. Yep. Uh, what is your message to every young person? You know, see, the design is there is campaigning. 
you know. Uh, a lot of people are campaigning. MK, Jay Z is campaigning. Yeah. <laughs> um, my advice to young people is to just, you know, participate in the voting process. That's the first thing. Um, participate in it. Um, and your participation is not just making your eggs in the ballot on the day of voting. It's actually taking time to read up on people's manifestos. It's taking time to do your research. <coughs> your research in terms of how have these people been governing? Because they're not going to start governing after like we vote. Some of them have been in governments before that. Look at how they've been governing in local, um, e- local um, spheres of governments, provincial spheres of governments, national spheres of governments. Look at um, their contributions in those different spheres of governments, right? Um, take your time and actually do your research on whoever you're going to be voting for because that person is going to be governing this country for the next five years. And that shouldn't be taken lightly. That's a lot of power and a lot of responsibility. And you do not want to make the mistake of voting for someone who hasn't done their work for the last 30 years or voting for someone that is simply not committed to what you want to see this country be in the next five years. So do your research. I think that's my advice to young people. Do your research. And I think if you've done your research, you'd probably come to the same conclusion I've come to. But yeah, just do your research. Do you think there's uh, uh, um, enough platforms whereby young people are being taught about the importance of voting? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think the IEC is doing enough work to educate the youth mm. about the voting process. Um, I don't think it's doing enough to ensure that the youth actually participates. Mm. Yeah, I don't think it's enough. You see how energetic you are right now. When you came here, you were not an energetic. Wow, and I so feel like fire, this thing so much fire in you. It does. It actually works. Like I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh my God, like... Has ignited you fine. <laughs> but yeah, um, thanks so much for coming. Thank I you for really having appreciate. me. Uh, we don't take this lightly. You could be doing something beneficiary with your time. You yeah. could be helping students. You know, you have so many emails you could be responding to, you know, so many proposals, trying to reach out to get funding for students, whatever. It is that you have for your schedule. You'll be doing that, but you chose to come and sit down with us. We don't take it lightly. We really Thank appreciate you your me. time, ma'am. And uh, we wish you all the best. Thank Just you. keep your head up, you know. Yeah. PYA Sasco will always capitalize on the small and you know, mistakes. Of course. That, j- like, specifically you, because, like, you are the president. Yeah. You know, of course, so that's really expected. They, they, will, they will capitalize on that. They will they will tweet some other things. Look, you'll be having a great time. And at seven or six, when you go to Twitter, I don't have Twitter. It's very yeah, toxic for me. I, I only log in online when I post a video post mm-hmm. and I, I log out. I don't have it. Very toxic. Yeah. So it can ruin your mood, can ruin your day. Sometimes you can feel like that they're ungrateful students because like they will be following the narrative of all these naysayers. So trying to tarnish the image of the SRC. But yeah. Just keep your head up. I think, you know, I think that's how you know you're doing something when people have something to say. Yeah. Because if people were quiet, that means you're not doing anything. Uh, Mama Khaiti said, if people are not saying anything, it means that you are not worthy. Exactly. When people exactly. are taking, or they're talking, it means like something. It's something, you do, you're doing something right. They, 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 they see the importance of criticizing you. Yeah. So, I, I have learned to not take it personally, you know. Because it's supposed to be like that. I think I hold a very important office in the institution. And not everyone is going to be happy with me. And that's just, I, I don't sell ice cream. Yeah. Um, I'm not money either. So. You're not Santa. You don't give Christmas. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So not everyone is going to be happy with me. But I think if I'm doing my best and majority of the student populace is able to see my work, that's what I do it for. And I do have a lot of students that always come up to me and they say, I appreciate your work and stuff like that. And really, that's who I do it for. And anyone else, like, I think if you have something to say to me, like, if I'm troubling you, (laughs) not even if I'm troubling you that much that you can't even sleep at night and I'm in, like, I'm the only thing that goes to your head before you sleep. That's great. Mm. I'm doing my job.
Thank you so much. We wish you all the best, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, let's. Oh, man, closing up. Thank you guys for watching. I uh, really appreciate your time. Make sure that you subscribe, you share, you comment, and doing that you are helping us to grow the platform and you are enticing more people to come upon the platform. You know, thank you so much. I think you should thank say you. that when you're me on camera. Like, mm. that's actually so cute. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I will roll in chat. Okay, let me stop laughing. I've been reading lately, huh? Eh? <laughs> 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 <laughs>